Our guest today is a playwright, a theater director, a scholar, a filmmaker, and an actor, Mahmood Farooqi. Welcome, Mahmood. Did I leave something out? Thank you very much. No, 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 no. That <laughs> makes me a joke of too many trades, you know, and a master of none, I suppose, you know. So, Mahmood, so, how are no, you? No, that's fine. I love it. How, how are you doing in these days of lockdown? Well, it's, 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 it's frustrating, but I think, you know, like many other people, I take solace from the fact that everybody is suffering, you know. It's not me alone who's suffering. When you fall ill or, you know, something happens to you or your projects don't go through, you feel the frustration and you feel a sense of defeat. And you also feel a sense of why me, you know. So, yes. but in this case, we are faced with something that is, there is no room for just why me, you know, because it's the whole city, it's the whole country. And it's the whole world, you know. So I mean, there is, you know, I mean, it's. So I suppose it is. It is. It is. It is how it is for everyone. And in, for us, in some ways, it is better because you know we have a small baby. So that focus, concentration, energy, everything has to go to him, and that saves us uh, some worrying. I think. You know. Yes, you're able to spend all your time with him. Is it uh, an exciting... Well, I used to do that from before only. Okay. It, so in my case, I'm a little bit teased off at the fact that all these men, you know, who never did any housework <laughs> are suddenly feeling very, you know, that I am doing this housework and I am so good and I am so whatever, woke. But, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. Now there is no distance left to what I was doing <laughs> because every Tom, Dick and Harry has now become whatever, you know, the good whatever housemate, you know. Yeah, so that upset me sometimes when my friends call me and tell me, Are, man, I, five bars and <laughs> I say, I've been changing my nappies, you know, for a year and a half. So, is so yeah, so also because, you know, because, you know, I think it's also because uh, Anusha and I have actually been, for us, it's been work for, from home for 20 years, you know. Yes. So in that sense, you know, as freelance artists who work from home, it isn't something very new, but obviously, you know, there is no getting out and there is no one coming in. So that creates, a, a, that's, that's, that's obviously a new scenario for us. True. As you said, for the whole world, in fact. So, Mahmood, let's go back yes. in time a little bit. And uh, what drew mm -hmm. you to Dastan Goi, which is the, the theatre form you're best known for? You revived the, the lost tradition of Dastan Goi. What drew you to it? So I had I had had some experience of doing theatre in in school and college, uh, and then I went off to England um, I, I, to do my 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 second BA in history at Oxford, and then I did an MPhil at Cambridge, and you know so I had I had a choice at that time I could go into be a scholar and go into a PhD you know, or come back to India and do something in the creative industries. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was ever any question of my joining the corporate world, you know, as a banker or a, or a finance person or whatever, an accounts or anything, you know. Yes. So I had a clear choice. So then I finally felt that I didn't want to spend my time. I like studying and I'm into books and writing and all that, but I didn't want to stay, you know, in, in spend my life in the libraries and the archives, which is what you have to do as a professional historian, you know. Yes. You have to spend, you know, like Foucault used to spend 16 hours a day in the libraries. You know? Yes. So I came back and I joined the media and I was a bit footloose at that time, but you know, I was doing some freelance work. When I read the great Shamsur Rahman Farooqi's book on the Astans and its mission, which had come out in 97, 90, 98, yeah. 99. Yeah. And um, of course he happened to be my uncle, you know, otherwise I might not have read the book because I'm not really that into, into that seriously into Urdu literature. Yes. But that book changed my life, obviously, you know, because I read about that tradition and it, it provided me, you know, as I read about it and I, I started, you know, I spent a few years, Anusha and I, trying to see whether we can make a documentary, how to make the world know about this tradition. Until, you know, a set of circumstances just came along and, you know, and the IIC said do a lecture demonstration. That's how the first performance was devised. But even as it was being devised, I could see that it was bringing together a lot of my interests. Yes. Because history was an interest of mine, literature was an interest, and performance was an interest. Yes. And this sort of allowed 
at that time also even before i was writing my own scripts yeah. a marriage of performance literature and and scholarship and history in a sense so that it was you know so the first show itself was very successful and very well received so it brought a lot of things you know there was language there was urdu poetry there was a sense of reviving something that had been neglected because of political reasons you know because culture had been dominated by values imposed by our colonial masters so there were a lot of things it was a kind of a resistance and so we were i was lucky you know that the first show that i did in delhi was so well received and then after that things i things i've never i've never looked back you know in a sense now many years later you've created a, a large pool of talented performers who perform dastans all over india and in different parts of the world do you have a formal training program i uh, no actually i don't have a formal training program because there is this kind of work has uh, sort of offshoot in many different areas of performance you know there is speech work there is gesticulation there is a particular form in which you have to sit which is like a yoga asana as well there is also a command over poetry so i don't have a formal training program but i worked with uh, people and i've conducted workshops over the years and uh, people come you know and you know if not everybody has the same capacity to grow or to learn so you have to try different systems different people and sometimes you just have to let them grow one of your most unusual set of uh, students were uh, prisoners at tihar jail what was that experience like yes. yeah so i was i was you know i went to prison in 2017 uh, uh, on a rape charge you know and then subsequently i was uh, uh, um, uh, acquitted by the high court and then twice the supreme court also upheld the high court judgment yeah. so when i went in obviously you know no one goes to 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 prison planning for it you know there is no planning for it i didn't even know i was going to go in you know so i went in and the first time that i went in it was a shock for me and i was just i didn't do anything you know yes and i went in after my conviction you know i it was a kind of a thing for me where i could either just sink or you know try and swim and do whatever i could you know mm. so even the first time that i had been sent in i had done a dastan goi performance and when i went in there you know as a prisoner i had to do labor and i said let me do this labor that let me you know try and create a, a, a set of a drama class uh, there mm. so it was very interesting because i worked with actors who were almost illiterate most yes. of them or they could just barely read and write yeah so some of them heard the dialogues by by ear and memorized them so i did workshops with them i started mm-hmm. with a small play munshi premchand then i did a formal court martial mm-hmm. and that was very unusual experience in prison because inmates wearing uniforms khaki uniforms holding guns and yes. speaking in english was something that the hard inmates had never seen and it was mm-hmm. a play court martial is about a, a murder a murder trial a yes. court martial of a jawan who killed yes. an officer so a lot of it resonated with the inmates it was a success in a way that i had not and not not imagined yes and then one thing after that you know it just took off you know so actually i ended up working you know for almost 7 to 8 9 hours of rehearsals every day that i had never really done before in my life you know yes. and it was like for a lot of my inmates as well as a full time occupation and it was very very enriching to me because you know theater provided a lot of those inmates even the illiterate ones with a sense of dignity a sense of purpose and identity yes and to me it proved the fact that you know you don't that acting is a skill that anyone can learn you know i had seen this in dastan goi as well because i had worked with anyone who came to me many people who came to me had never performed before Mm. and some of them have now gone on to carve an identity for themselves and are even surviving earning money from this yes. so i was i had already worked with people who had had no stage experience yes. but within prison within those rules regulations working with inmates and creating something that later on you know became a, a, a sort of a, a benchmark within prison was was very satisfactory mm. and i'm very very proud of what the actors did and some of them you know who had never acted before turned out to be so talented yes and it it's a release it's a therapy i mean you know tim robbins you know the actor who played who acted in in the shawshank redemption has been working in prisons in california for the longest time and yeah. i i do believe that theater in prison is a great therapy and mm-hmm. i have continued to do my work there you know since three years since i've been i've been out i go there twice a month three a month he's still doing productions it's wonderful really so tell me now do you think uh, 
we'll be seeing das dastan covid 19 ki in a while from now what are you working on <laughs> well so I, we, we had you know so it's it's uh, it, the, 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 right now we I, I just finished a new show on the 31st of jan you know just a month before this hit and mm. this year 2020 was our 15 year of revival of dastan Wo in 2005 <laughs> Yes, and 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 I'm very proud of this. You know that now there are people who have. I mean, of course, there are lots of people that I've trained who have gone on to become independent, in the right way or wrong way. Good luck to them. But yes. a lot of people are earning their livelihood. They're earning their names through Dastan Gui, yes. and so many people have taken it up. You know, from Toronto to Calcutta. So I'm very proud of what has happened in those 15 years. And this year we had a big celebration lined up. You know. We were doing performances at, at Akshara, at, at yeah. Habitat, in Lucknow, at, at Prithvi in Bombay. So I don't know what's going to happen to our 15-year celebrations. But given that, you know, there is so much worse happening to everyone else around us in the world, yeah. it's okay, we'll do a 16-year celebration next year. Just one thing I want to say that in a sense it has come, it's a, it's, it's this, 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 work, this confinement is not so bad for us because, you know, Anusha and I have been working on a web series, which you know, okay. is a kind of a return to screen work as well, you know. Yes. And the not having performances, not having anywhere to go, in a sense, has given us the time to write the screenplays for the web series that we had been commissioned before that. So this is, uh, this is, this is, in a sense, there is, there is, uh, there is a good thing in this. Yes, yes. Well, when do you think uh, the web series will actually go on? I mean, you're just writing it now. So <laughs> we, are supposed to, we were supposed to start production in July, but now, obviously, you know, it's going to be postponed a bit, you know. Yes. Yeah, so well, it's, it's a newer world that we are going to enter. Yes. Yeah, so is this your first, um, like, audio-visual work after People Live? Yes, barring some small documentaries, you know, as, a, as an inmate inside Tihar, I made a documentary on Tihar and Anusha has done work here, but a kind of a major big fictional series, this is first 10 years after People Live, you know, we're looking very much looking forward to that. But do you think this is a good time for artists to get together and evolve a policy and ask both government and corporate India? I think corporate India shirks its responsibility towards the arts to an extreme degree. But I, do you think that... I'll, I'll, I'll say that actually Corporate India shirks its responsibility towards everyone, I think, you know. Because, you know, a hundred years ago, we had corporates who actually did some philanthropy, you know. They yeah. opened colleges and hospitals and dharamshalas and schools, not for profit, you know. And yeah. today you have a scenario where even the hugest corporate houses, you know, who have more money than they can use in 5,000 years, are opening schools and colleges just to make more money. You know? it's, yes, it's, that's, I mean, sad, uh, that's the sad thing in our country that corporates yeah. really do not see any value in the in the arts, you know, because it's I think, and actually also I think as a people as a people we don't have enough of a culture of philanthropy. Not just the corporates are rich people as well don't do enough philanthropy. You know, that's true. so that's there is a problem. Even a yeah. culture of philanthropy in India which doesn't exist and which yeah. is there in other parts of the world where the where the arts do thrive. So let's hope that this time is a time when we as artists can can work out some sort of a framework and at least present it to government and to uh, the corporate world. So that it's a great, it's a great uh, idea, it's a great idea, absolutely. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At least we should do our bit, you know. We have to do something, you know. We can't, you know. We have to do what we can do. It. Yes, because we. I think it's been such a like a shock to the system. This whole situation yeah. it makes you think about yeah. the future and what you need to do yeah. to carry on. But I would say, you know, don't expect too much from mankind, you know. Don't expect too much from mankind, but you know, they learn a lesson, you know. I think, you know, as soon as the lockdown ends, you know. We'll go back to our same old destructive ways, you know. My fear is that. Well, I hope that at least some of us will have learned and certainly we as mm -hmm. artists yeah. can continue yeah. to yeah. express and get across to a few people. Well, thank you, Mehmet. Inshallah. Wonderful Lovely. to have you with us. And um, I'm now yeah. releasing you to look after Ramesh. And uh, take care. Ramesh, yes. thank you. Yes, <laughs> lovely. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.